Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. We're going to take a detailed look at CSP data center network automation strategies for 5G, edge, and advanced enterprise services. We'll be identifying the main barriers and challenges and finding out how CSPs can accelerate the progress of their data center network automation. And joining me to explain more and to discuss the results of a new global study and white paper are Ben Baker, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Juniper Networks, and Gherkem Yeet, Principal Analyst at Analysis Mason. Well, welcome both of you. Gherkem, in a moment, we'll go through the findings of the research you conducted with Tier 1 CSPs worldwide. But first, Ben, why did Juniper commission this study? Well, Guy, we have literally hundreds of communication service provider customers around the world, and our account teams are, are working with these companies every day. And then when you think about cloud and cloud native infrastructure, again, on the Juniper side, some of our largest customers that the, are the cloud hyperscalers, and we've been working with them closely since their inception. So we do think we have a good understanding of the SP data center environment. However, uh, we want to get some third party validation of what we think we already know. And of course, when you conduct a survey like this, you do learn a bunch of new things about the situation at SPs. And when you aggregate this information across a, a broad, diverse range of, of service providers like uh, Analysis Mason has done, it, it helps you get a fully coherent view. And we certainly take these inputs and make sure they match what we're doing in terms of product roadmaps. Uh, and finally, we want to specifically dig into the state of data center automation. What are the problems that SPs are having in, their, in operating their data centers? And ultimately, we think that Juniper has the portfolio to help SPs manage their data centers, their telco cloud infrastructure, in hyper-efficient ways, similar to how the big public cloud providers do it. So, we want to understand why are SPs not adopting some of these tools as fast as we think they should be. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so, Gherkem, tell us about how you conducted this research. Yeah, sure. Um, so, over the last six, seven months, um, we collected a great amount of inputs and data. Uh, first, through an online survey uh, with 30 tier one communication service providers, um, CSPs worldwide. And we also uh, did five additional in-depth phone interviews with them. So our aim was to identify the key drivers and the trends for CSP data center strategies, and particularly to understand CSP's approach to data center network automation, their main drivers and challenges, um, target use cases, and the tools they are using to automate their networks. So you can see on the slide uh, the demographics of uh, the CSPs we surveyed. And most of the CSP participants uh, were from North America, Western Europe, and Southeast Asia, which um, also includes Japan and India. But we also had um, CSPs from other regions as well. So overall, this is a global study. And when we look at the types of CSPs, uh, the large majority was integrated service providers uh, with mobile and fixed networks and enterprise managed ICT services. So these are typically large CSPs with extensive network and data center assets and service offerings. And in terms of data center size, um, most participants, they clustered around 10 to 24 data centers. But we also had some CSPs with more than 50 or 100. And we actually did um, in-depth interviews with some of these large CSPs that provide um, global data center services with locations spread all around the world. And finally, um, the titles and responsibilities. Um, we have a very balanced mix of respondents here, um, which helped us uh, get a very holistic view of the state of the CSP data center network automation today and their future roadmaps. Um, not only we had senior executives that are in charge of their data center strategy and transformation, but also the technical staff, such as network architects, engineers, um, operations managers, so these are the people who get their hands dirty, you know, with actually implementing and using the data center automation solutions. Well, let's now look at what you discovered. What did you find were the key drivers and trends for CSP data center strategies? Sure. So there are three main drivers um, that are influencing um, CSP's data center strategies and investment focus today. So first is the new opportunities in the enterprise managed services and connectivity markets. 
there is a major transformation underway in the enterprise market today. And this is started with um, SD-WAN, SASE, and more recently, CSP started to add um, multi-cloud networking, um, industrial applications and use cases at the edge, and also private networks to their enterprise service portfolios. And the second is uh, network cloudification or telco cloud, especially for 5G networks. It is a, it's a major driver. And the third, uh, the deployment of new edge computing locations in order to support both these enterprise and 5G services I just mentioned. So all these new technologies and advanced services are very much interrelated and complementary to each other, and they will be deployed and operated in CSP data centers. So CSPs need really state-of-the-art, operationally efficient, and programmable data centers in order for them to be successful. So these are the high-level um, top three drivers. But uh, when we asked CSPs their number one priority, the majority of the CSPs rank 5G telco clouds as the most important driver, as you can see on the right. CSPs are in the process of um, building their 5G networks using cloud-native disaggregated technologies, and they're starting from their mobile core networks, for example, um, running on centralized data centers and gradually expanding into the radio access network, where you have the VDUs and the VCUs um, deployed in network edge data centers. So this finding suggests that the CSPs acknowledge the need to modernize and automate their data centers to successfully manage this infrastructure transformation. We also split the responses by region here. And one of the key regional variances that jumps out of it is that the data center agenda of the majority of the CSPs from Asia Pacific is driven by Taco Cloud. But the main drivers for um, CSPs from other regions are more evenly spread out. Especially for North American and Western European CSPs, uh, the main focus on data center investments include things like uh, adoption of public cloud and multi cloud, capex reduction, and to lesser extent, um, edge computing. So what is driving these regional differences um, in the data center strategies? So the chart I'm showing on the left uh, shows the percentage of workloads that run in different environments. So from traditional on-prem data centers to public clouds and, and SaaS. And this is both today and in two years time. Overall, the shift from on-prem to public cloud and SaaS is definitely underway, but it is not happening very rapidly. However, when we zoom into the data, we see that um, the CSPs in North America and Western Europe particularly are the fastest in terms of uh, moving their workloads to public cloud and SaaS. And we know that the number of partnerships between these CSPs and the public cloud providers have grown significantly over the past couple of years, most often for multiple aspects for their IT transformations, and more recently to support the joint launch of their public edge computing services to enterprises. And when we look at, um, at the chart on the right, we see that most CSPs in North America and Western Europe are reducing and consolidating the number of their traditional data centers. Indeed, many CSPs in North America, um, such as AT&T, Verizon, Bell Canada, or in Western Europe, um, BT, Telecom Italia, Telefonica, they all divested a large portion of their data center assets over the last decade. Instead, they partnered with um, carrier neutral co-location providers, such as Equinix, Digital Realty, and others for their data center needs. So overall, for the Western world, while the 5G and telco cloud is absolutely important, their main data center focus is more skewed towards the adoption of public cloud, multi-cloud, and CapEx reduction. The story in the Asia-Pacific region, on the other hand, is, is a little bit different. Um, these CSPs, they show a stark difference in their data center footprint, footprint strategies. And this is mainly due to um, the historical lack of strong presence of public cloud providers and high IP transit costs and some data localization loads. And many CSPs are making large investments in, in, in growing and the number and the size of their data centers in this region, both for their IT and network needs. And there are some large CSPs, um, such as China Telecom, KDDI, or NTT. They are competing in the data center infrastructure market at a global scale, and they're expanding their data center presence across the world. However, we also see that um, the public cloud and the SaaS adoption um, is growing in this region, and public cloud providers are rapidly expanding their presence and service offerings in these new Asian countries. And we also saw that in some cases, they are taking advantage of um, CSP's strong positions in the local enterprise markets to introduce joint offers in partnerships with CSPs. 
So in sum, I think we can conclude that um, the CSP on-prem data centers and private clouds um, will remain important. And this is for supporting their both digital and the network transformation ambitions. But CSPs will need to operate increasing the hybrid infrastructures where IT network and enterprise applications will be deployed across multiple different data centers and cloud environments. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, and Gurkham, what about the edge though? Do, do CSPs have different strategies when it comes to edge data centers? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so we looked at edge, edge data center investments um, separately, the, the operators' plans in this research. And by edge data center, by the way, we mean uh, the smaller and more distributed data centers located in CSP networks, such as um, cell sites, um, metro data centers, or central offices. And in contrast to the regional variances uh, we saw in the traditional data centers, our research shows that the many CSPs across all regions have very strong plans to invest in these new distributed data centers at the edge. So the majority of uh, the CSPs are simultaneously focusing on both enterprise edge clouds, and this is to provide new IoT operational technology or enhanced enterprise services, and also the network edge clouds to host their 5G functions uh, such as VRAN and OpenRAN. However, um, our research and interviews also indicate that in most CSP organizations, uh, these network edge and enterprise edge strategies are executed separately by different business units. Um, today, the enterprise edge clouds are often based on public cloud provider stacks, and they're being deployed in regional and metro data centers. And this is mainly to process certain types of data locally, and this is for the security and regulatory reasons. And when we look at the network edge clouds, um, these are mainly located in cell sites or near cell sites, and this is to cater the needs of real-time processing requirements of uh, cloud-based RAM functions. So there are some advanced CSPs are, are joining up or they are planning to join up these um, different edge strategies and deployments um, uh, because there are going to be some new enterprise use cases um, that require near real-time response and processing in, in the RAN. But today, um, these areas are, are fairly um, separate activities. And when we uh, look at the number of edge data centers, um, the CSPs are planning to rollouts over the next couple of years, we see that the most CSPs um, that has an edge strategy are expecting to have between 10 to 24 edge data center locations. And you may recall um, that that is kind of similar to the footprint of their existing traditional data centers. But we also see that um, there are several CSPs from North America, Western Europe, and Asia Pacific they have more aggressive edge rollout plans with more than 50 or 100 edge locations in the near term. But of course, this is just the beginning. Um, based on our general edge computing research, we expect that the edge footprints will likely to be much bigger in the long term. And because enterprises will require a more distributed edge native compute fabric that is available pretty much at every conceivable location. So this means that potentially hundreds or thousands of edge nodes in a country or region. So all this means that um, this sheer number and the scale of centralized and distributed edge data centers will make the data center network automation capabilities um, for managing this infrastructure even more important. OK, so these key drivers and trends are for overall data center strategies. Ben, can you explain why data center networks and their automation are so important? Yeah, clearly, as we've seen here, data centers and cloud infrastructure are becoming increasingly important to SPs. And we've all seen that as the application world is, is moving to microservices and Kubernetes orchestration, that the network is more important than ever to connect all these dispersed workloads. So data center networking and operations are critical. Uh, SPs are too big and th their businesses are too complex to be successful with these data center strategies that Gorkum just went through without a heavy dose of automation, you know, without the right tools for DC automation and orchestration, what we're talking about today just becomes a big operational mess. And, and SPs have to learn to do this themselves. It would be a mistake to cede your strategy entirely to the public cloud providers. So given this importance, Gurkham, what is the current state of CSP data center network automation? Yes. Um, so despite the importance of um, the data center network automation, as Ben just explained, 
uh, we see that um, the CSPs have actually made little progress in automating their data center network operations so far. So let me explain uh, the results I'm sharing now. Um, so we asked CSPs uh, to rate their current level of automation for each of these operational areas. And we gave them ranges such as less than 10%, 10 to 25%, 2050, so on and so forth. And we took the median points of the aggregated inputs in order to assess the overall level. For example, 38% um, here means that most of the CSPs automated that particular area between the range of 25 to 50%. And similarly, 18% here means that it is in the range of 10 to 25%. So when we look at these results, um, we see that CSPs have made some strides in automating um, relatively straightforward areas, such as self-service portal integration and software upgrades and patching. However, many key operational processes, such as configuration, root cause identification, and change validation, all these remain highly manual today. And CSPs do not really demonstrate um, strong ambition or urgency to ramp up the level of automation in the near term either. We ask CSPs about their expectations for automation in two years' time, by the way, which is quite a long time for cloud and data center technologies that are likely to evolve and change rapidly in that period. And CSPs expect to introduce automation to just above half of their operational processes um, within this time frame. And while their expectations for other key areas, such as root cause identification and telemetry, are still low. So all these results suggest that there is a major gap between CSPs and hyperscalers, large-scale enterprises, and the emerging network-as-a-service competitors you know, in terms of their current data center automation abilities and then the future plans. So we then zoomed into the day two plus operations, uh, which we found that many CSPs are facing significant challenges today. And CSPs are generally struggling to automate fundamental day two processes, such as capacity management, uh, monitoring and assurance, and service provisioning and change. So this will pose major obstacles for CSPs when they're expected to meet their key service metrics, such as time to markets, on-demand provisioning, and SLAs, including mean time to repair and uptime. And this is especially true for the more advanced services they're preparing to launch you know, once their 5G networks and edge data centers are in place. And in our in-depth interviews, uh, most CSPs highlighted uh, the monitoring and troubleshooting as their main pain points for day two operations. And they especially highlighted the lack of service intelligence and visibility across the multi-vendor network elements. And this is due to the underlying fragmentation of vendor proprietary data center automation tools and the data models. So what are the main barriers and challenges then to data center network automation? Yes. So according to our survey, um, CSPs are facing two major barriers uh, that are hindering their data center network automation investments and, and the progress. First, um, it's the lack of technology standardization and fragmentation in their data centers. And the second is um, the difficulty in justifying an OPEX-driven business case for automation. And in addition to these two barriers, um, our interview surfaced another barrier um, that is related to the data center ownership structure and organizational mindsets. So let me go into detail on each of these um, barriers and let's start with technology fragmentation. So many CSPs we talked to um, pointed out that their data center networking environments are highly fragmented and very complex to operate and automate. And this is because their data center networks consist of several vendor-specific hardware, as well as the management software tools. And there's already the existing heterogeneity of the traditional IT switches and tools that are procured uh, from Juniper, Cisco, and Arista. But in addition to that, um, as CSPs cloudify their mobile networks, network function providers for telco clouds, such as Ericsson, Nokia, and Huawei, they're also bringing their own or partner networking components to CSP data center, and this further increases the technology and operational fragmentation. And in the cases uh, where CSPs operate their enterprise many service customer environments, they have additional complexity because each of these customer networks come with a different mix of network equipment. So overall, serving a wide range of services and use cases, so IT, telco cloud, and enterprise, and all these use a diverse set of underlay silos and overlay networks makes it very difficult for CSPs to rationalize and automate their data center networks. 
As you can see on this pie chart, um, CSPs often have to use multiple management and automation software solutions. And they are provided by a range of hardware and IT vendors, as well as we see the use of um, some scripting tools like Ansible or Python, and also the in-house ground solutions. So all these disparate systems uh, result in high operational complexity, um, which is the main challenge um, the CSPs associate with their data center network automation technologies, as the charts um, on the right shows. And this is especially the case for CSPs uh, that mainly rely on single vendor automation solutions because they are typically focusing only on the operations of their own network elements and the domains. And moving to uh, the second biggest barrier, um, which is the difficulty in justifying the business case for automation. But before that, um, I should explain what this chart shows. So based on the responses on the vendor technology choices, the pie chart I, I showed in the previous slides, we categorize CSPs into three groups. The first one is the CSPs that only use third-party vendor solutions uh, like Juniper, Cisco, and Nokia, and others for their automation needs. And the second group is the CSPs that mainly rely on in-house tools. And the third group is the, the hybrid, meaning that they have a mix of in-house and, and vendor solutions. And the reason why we did this is to isolate and understand the top technology challenges associated with each group of CSPs. So we see that the operational complexity is the main problem for the CSPs that only use the vendor solutions or hybrid environments with vendor plus in-house solutions, which is what we discussed in the previous slide. But when we look at the CSPs that mainly rely on their own tools, in-house grown tools and platforms for automation, cost and scalability are their main challenges. And this may not come as a surprise because in-house created automation requires developers and network engineers and operations people to spend a lot of time and effort in building, testing, and integrating these custom DIY automation tools. And the maintenance and the continuous development and the improvement of such tools can become highly expensive over their life cycle. So given the high cost of manual processes and in-house development, why CSPs are struggling to build a strong business case for automation. And this is because um, the on-prem operations and in-house development costs are actually hidden. So CSP data centers serve multiple lines of businesses and the costs are shared across these different teams and units within them. And also data center staff, they often straddle multiple engineering operations and development responsibilities at the same time. So all these factors make it very difficult to have a clear-cut, granular view of the existing costs. And as such, CSPs cannot really carry out a healthy evaluation of the costs and the benefits of new automation solutions and initiatives against the status quo. And the final and maybe the most important barrier is that um, CSPs have an entirely different mindset to data center networking and automation compared to enterprises and hyperscalers. For example, hyperscalers have a very much DevOps-driven constant optimization and automation approach to solve their data center problems. But many CSPs are used to throwing more people as human glues, or they do expansive custom integrations or ad hoc tools to solve their operational challenges. I shared some of the quotes um, here that we got from the interviews. It's, it's basically reflects their, their, their thinking especially the first one on the left that highlights you know, the culture and the mindset is really fostering um, these, these practices. And also CSPs have a very telecoms network centric view. Most CSPs we talked to um, about data center automation, first thing they think about was um, network or service orchestration. And also they were thinking about things like NMS, EMS, or other tools they use in the, in the wide area networks. So overall, their automation thinking and focus is, is primarily on um, access networks or wide area networks, and they tend to overlook their data centers. But given that the data centers are an integral part of their network transformation, there is an evident disconnect we are seeing in CSP's thinking between their network and service ambitions and the actual focus they are putting in their data center network automation to support them. It's fascinating. Thanks for that, Gurkham. Ben, what's Juniper's reaction to hearing all this information? Yeah, there's so many important insights to unpack here in the last few slides. Um, but, but just a few things briefly. The, the Juniper portfolio can certainly help SPs here tremendously. And 
what we've done is we've changed the economics for an SP to build out and to operate their own cloud infrastructure, their, their data centers. And it's really interesting how this survey found that SPs fundamentally think about network automation in different ways than an enterprise or a hyperscaler does. So Juniper for years now, you know, we've had our Paragon portfolio of tools to automate the WAN and we have a great solution for the data center overlay. And, and that's our Contrail product that orchestrates cloud workloads and virtual networks. And more recently now with Appstra, we have a, a fantastic product to manage the underlay, the, the data center fabric that uh, we've really focused on for this survey. And philosophically, Appstra fits well with how Juniper has always approached the marketplace. You know, for example, in terms of being open, uh, Appstra is multi-vendor and pretty much all SP environments today are, are multi-vendor. And as Gorkum said, a lot of that fragmentation in the data center networks is, is a problem and, and Appstra can help solve that problem. And, and also, if you think about reliability, uh, you know, historically, this could be, you know, the one single word that you would use to describe what drives a telco business. And as it turns out, reliability is, is a key founding principle of, of Appstra. And, and the idea that the blueprints that Appstra is based upon essentially give you reliability and consistency. And, and this is what ultimately gives you speed of operations. And, you know, one of the interesting things is that that connection between reliability and consistency and speed, this is one of the key insights that we can all learn from the cloud hyperscalers who, who are masters at managing their infrastructure. So, so we bring that knowledge to the uh, SP world. Uh, a final point here about understanding the business case for data center automation. As Gorkum said, the inertia of SPs doing it themselves with tools they've developed in-house is tough to overcome. Uh, but, but stay tuned. In the coming months, we're going to start putting out a lot of details around the savings that our customers have realized after switching over to Appstra. Thanks, Ben. And Gurkham, what are the solutions and recommendations for accelerating the progress of CSP data center network automation? Yeah, well, I think our research makes it very clear um, that most CSP data centers aren't really ready uh, for the automation and agility needs of 5G, Edge, and all the new enterprise service opportunities that we talked about. And this really needs to change fast. So there are several things um, CSPs need to do both from technology and organizational point of view. And let's start with the easier one, which is, which is technology. As I mentioned before, um, and Ben alluded to it as well, the high level of fragmentation and operational silos is the really the biggest technology barrier to automation. So CSPs need to change the way they design and operate their data center networks by moving away from the traditional vendor-driven bottom-up approach to a top-down paradigm. And this means that CSPs should start from business intent and application requirements first. And the design and the choice of lower level hardware and software components should be driven by these requirements, not the other way around as is the case today. And a key step towards making this paradigm shift will be um, a creation of a horizontal end-to-end -end automation layer that collapses these vendor specific silos. And of course, every CSP has a different starting point for their automation journey. And building this horizontal multi-vendor automation layer will not be an easy task, especially over um, the siloed and the complex brownfield networks. However, having a truly multi-vendor network automation platform will be essential for all CSPs in order to tackle this operational complexity and fragmentation. And as, as we can see um, here in this chart, um, CSPs acknowledge that they strongly need such a multi-vendor automation platform for their data center networks. And for the hardest parts, um, which is organizational change, there are several things to do. Um, one of the most important findings from our research was that the CTO is often the main budget holder for data center net networks, not the CIO, unlike in many enterprises. And in some CSPs, um, the data center responsibility is delegated to heads of data center network operations. So we know that the CTOs typically have much greater focus on mobile and fixed networks than on data centers. So the fact that the CTOs do not give strong backing to lower level budget holders for data center automation may be a key factor behind the low priority and the low level of automation we just seen. And we dig deeper to understand these organizational and the mindset issues further. And one CSP um, said that 
the complex and the continuously changing data center ownership structure in their organization is one of the major inhibitors to their automation efforts. And another interview, we mentioned that um, despite having the budget to implement automation tools, there is no group dedicated to actually getting it done. And the current staff are just too busy with their daily firefighting routines. So all these issues should be addressed um, by C-level executives urgently as CSPs are getting ready to launch their 5G and edge networks. And CTOs in particular should step up their efforts um, to prioritize and accelerate data center automation initiatives. And they need to think about how to restructure the responsibility for data center operations so that they can be um, pretty much equal to other network operations um, and they have as much visibility. So they really need a long-term transformation and automation plan that is inclusive of all lines of businesses. Um, it's going to be a critical part of the effort. And just going back to um, the business case issue, one of the key roadblocks that's, you know, to, to implement this plan is going to be building this business case. So CSPs really need to look at it um, holistically. And this should be driven by their strategic objectives and, and then the long, long-term long plan. So, And the first step they need to do is actually the decomposing and mapping their data center network processes across operations, engineering, and development in detail to uncover the hidden costs I mentioned before. And finally, I would also add that um, CSPs might benefit from working with external partners in order to develop a framework for this business case so that they can identify the realistic benefits and the costs of automation based on market evidence and experience, which can be really helpful to strengthen their business case. All right, thanks, Gurkham. So, Ben, can you summarize the findings here and explain how viewers can access the white paper and also tell us what's coming next? Uh, yeah, well, you know, first, thank, thank you, Telecom TV, for hosting this session. And Thank you, Gorkum, for the excellent work. We hope everyone watching has found this to be informative. One of the things we're going to do further down the road later this year is we're going to do another survey that digs down even further into some of these key areas. Um, but as a, as a short-term follow-up for the audience, please read the report created by Analysis Mason that delves even deeper into the, the topics that we went through today. And then be sure to tune in on May 5th, where we'll have a panel with Analysis Mason and special guests from Juniper Networks to get their perspective on, on all of this. And finally, thank you all for the audience for, for listening in. Well, thank you, Ben, and also Gurkham. Thank you both very much indeed. And a reminder that you can download the white paper now. Just follow the links below this video. And as Ben says, don't forget to join us for our live Q&A panel discussion on Thursday, the 5th of May. Just check the website for local times. And that's in just two days, and we look forward to receiving all your questions. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.